Hello everyone. We will be discussing a minor OT procedure that is dysmetopexy. Pexy means to fix. Dysmetopexy means surgically fixing the desmetic membrane. We will be discussing the two main indications of dysmetopexy that is desmetic membrane detachment and high drops. When to use air? When to use gas? How is dysmetopexy performed? How to prepare C3F8 isoexpensile mixture? What are venting incisions and when are they used? First, we will come to the indication which is desmus membrane detachment. When do you suspect a DMD? A DMD is suspected when there is localized corneal edema with distinct demarcation between the edematous and compact cornea. It leads to significant visual impairment from persisting corneal edema which can be reversed with early intervention. As we can see, there is a demarcation zone between the edematous cornea and the non-edematous cornea. On slit lamp examination, if a thin slit is made, then a thin flimsy membrane can be appreciated, which is the detached desmus membrane. Here are some examples of desmus membrane detachment where localized edema with demarcation zone can be appreciated. In patients with severely edematous, especially diffuse corneal edema, not resolving with steroids, ASOCT can be useful to make the diagnosis of DMD and knowing the exact location of DMD. The site of injecting air in cases of air dysmetopexy can be decided accordingly. ASOCT also helps in picking up tears in the desmus membrane. As previously discussed, the importance of knowing the location of DMD is important before the patient is taken for air dysmetopexy on the OT table. The needle should be introduced from the non-edematous attached cornea and not from the edematous detached cornea. The procedure of air desmetopexy will be discussed in detail in the upcoming video. This is a case of acute corneal high drops. It is a condition characterized by the stromal edema due to leakage of aqueous through a tear in the desmus membrane. It occurs in corneal ectasias like keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration and post talc. The problem in high drops is the formation of intrastromal clefts which need longer duration of tamponade as compared to DMD to prevent aqueous penetration into the stroma. In cases of DMD, the most common tamponading agent used is air. Except in cases of long-standing detachment, failed reattachment with air, or in cases of tears in desmus membrane, where expensile gases like C3F8 are used. In case of high drops, gases like C3F8 are most commonly used. The site of injection in DMD, as previously discussed, depends upon the location of DMD, but in high drops, since there is mostly a central cornea edema, the site of injection is the peripheral clear cornea. In DMD, full chamber air is left for 10 minutes and later it is burped out. Short term tamponade is mostly effective and then later on, when the endothelium is functional, endothelium pu pump takes over. In case of high drops, two third chamber C3F8 is left to allow a scope for expansion. Post-operatively in DMD, supine position is to be maintained for one night, but in case of high drops, the patient is asked to assume the supine position for up to one week. This is how a C3F8 cylinder looks. This air filter is useful for obtaining the sterilized gas for air dysmetopexy. 14% mixture of C3F8 to air by volume is the ideal gas composition that would achieve tamponade without increasing the IOP through further expansion. C3F8 is diluted 7 times to achieve an isoexpensile concentration of 14%. That means that 0.1 ml of C3F8 gas is aspirated from the cylinder using an air filter in a tuberculin syringe. The syringe is then completed with room air up to 0.7 mark to achieve a concentration of 14%. In case a 2 ml syringe is used, then 0.2 ml of C3F8 gas is aspirated and it is completed with room air up to 1.4 ml mark. This is a surgical video for demonstration of the procedure of air or C3F8 dysmetopexy. This is a patient of acute corneal high drops. Any site in the peripheral clear cornea can be used for entry. A 30 gauge needle is taken and it is directed towards the angle. It is not to be directed towards the pupil. It has to be kept over the iris at all times taking care not to touch the lens. Later on, air or gas is injected and a bud is kept on the site of opening before the needle is withdrawn to prevent the air from escaping. 
the bud should be removed after a period of 1 minute in certain cases in the first attempt if sufficient air has not been injected then a repeat injection from the same site can be attempted as can be seen in the video here Post operatively the patient is started on antibiotic eye drops 4 times a day topical steroids in tapering doses and cyclopegic at bed time venting incisions what are venting incisions they are the openings which are made in the corneal stroma to release the fluid they are used in case of acute corneal eye drops with tears in the desmids membrane and multiple intrastromal clefts and also to drain the fluid in free desmids area in patients with dsec a 23 gauge needle or a microkeratome or mvr plate is used and it is inserted at the highest point of the detached desmids membrane the stab incisions are made for this purpose air society can be used as a guide for this here is a video demonstrating the procedure of giving these venting incisions The needle should be stopped as soon as it penetrates the stroma or at the first egress of fluid. The patient is asked to lie supine for 10 minutes. Air can be injected through the initial incision which can later be removed. 